pen here with you and we're going to be looking at this lesson an introduction to resistors in the uh, previous lesson we looked at what was resistance and uh, the four factors that affect resistance and in this lesson we're going to look at the different kinds of resistors that are made for particular purposes when we're doing electrical work so we're going to describe the components whose resistance varies with external influences such as heat and light are a couple of examples so if you're using the textbook to follow along with these video lessons then uh, we're on section 5.2 of uh, electrical principles by Phillips so resistors a resistor is an electrical component with a fixed value of resistance resistor values range from less than one ohm right up to many millions of ohms so fractions of an ohm up to well over mega ohms resistors are given a power rating because they get hot when current is passed through. They're the two big issues around a resistor. Whenever you're selecting a resistor, you want to know its value of resistance and you want to know how many watts of energy it can handle or dissipate. Because if you're not careful with that, it'll get so hot it'll destroy itself. And the power rating of a resistor determines the maximum current the resistor can pass without overheating and self destructing. So we're going to start with uh, power resistors. Power resistors come in a few different uh, shapes and forms. I'll just turn my pen on here. So these are all power resistors. In this particular case, we've got a piece of resistive wire, it might be something like nichrome, is wrapped around a former and then a little pigtail is connected out to give you a wire normally made of copper to connect to the resistive element inside you can see it says here ceramic former so it's wrapped around a glass type former which can withstand lots and lots of heat of course and then over the outside we quite often get a protective coating again often made of a ceramic of some kind so this particular one um, has large diameter wire and uh, only a few windings or a few wraps around the former therefore it's relatively low resistance where it's mate over here same kind of construction but smaller diameter wire and a lot more of it wrapped around the former making it a higher value so though that resistance construction that we've just seen there applies directly to this guy here so it's like we've drawn a cross section through him like this and that's what we see on the inside quite often you'll see resistors in a nice ceramic box and there's tabs here that uh, at either end gives you the full resistance value and in the middle it gives you a tapped off value so by connecting across here you'll get one resistance value and by going across here you'll get a second resistance value therefore using it as a fan speed controller putting resistance in the path of the fan to give it voltage drop therefore reduce the speed of the fan also we can get uh, resistors that look like this typically these this type of things are maybe a 10 watt resistor again in a ceramic package and in this particular case if you can read upside down it says 10 ohms more popular these days are these ones here it's a ceramic uh, resistor again but in an aluminium case 
and you'll notice the case has all these little fins wrapped around the outside of it that increases the surface area and that means that it can dissipate more heat into the air so it can keep the resistor a compact small shape but it has a higher wattage because it can get rid of that heat into the air and then finally over here we have a set of resistor grids so we've got uh, these large resistors here mounted between some uh, copper buzz bar as we can see here there's some copper buzz bar buzz bar and we have resistive elements connected in across here often just large plates of cast metal again very high power so high power and probably low resistance Uh, the place that you may have seen this is on the tops of railway train carriages so quite often when they want to do some braking of the electric motors on the trains they switch in these big resistor banks which are sitting on top of the train which get cool air across them to slow the electric train down so these are called power resistors so there's some typical power resistors this next lot we might call electronic resistors or low power resistors and uh, they're typically the resistive element is a carbon film so again I just turn my pen on so we get this carbon film inside the resistor creating the resistive element we have a protective coating wrapped around the outside again can sometimes be ceramic and sometimes can actually just be kind of a paint film so here you can see nice thick carbon tracks means low resistance here we have much finer carbon tracks and a lot more of them so high resistance and these resistors you can see here this construction uh, that's this guy here that's what he looks like and you'll see that this is a uh, three band resistor with the tolerance up that end so typically they they come in uh, these resistors in this shape or construction method come in um, one eighth watt one quarter watt half watt and one watt so they start at uh, an eighth of a watt you can get them in quarter of a watt half a watt all the way up to one watt surface mount resistors typically tend to be around one eighth or one quarter watts physically because of their physical size they can't dissipate much heat and over here you can see some smaller quarter watt so there you go so they're what we call carbon film resistors uh, the low power end mostly used in electronics next we have variable resistors and variable resistors where they use carbon track or anything else follow this basic principle of a resistive element of some kind that's around the outside here we've got a resistive element and we've got a start and a finish and in the middle we've got a variable wiper so we can place that wiper down this end or we could place the wiper here or we could place the wiper here and the resistance value will change so you can see here we've got this one if we're measuring a resistance at this point this one is set to minimum because the wipers right down this end now we're about halfway 
and then finally if we've wiped all the way around the outside got the full amount in this case maximum and this was obviously a 100 ohm variable resistor so at the full wipe we've got the 100 ohms here halfway we've got 50 and all the way back down here supposedly we have zero ohms there's a couple of ways we draw this the typical easy way we draw it these days is a rectangle with an arrow at center it's the arrow at center that indicates that it's variable and the alternative is the good old wiggly line to form a resistor but again it is the arrow at the center so a variable resistor is also called a potentiometer it has three terminals the center one connected to the moving wiper as the wiper is moved along the carbon track the resistance between it and the outside terminals obviously changes so here's an example of some variable resistors they're not all carbon track so again this is a very small trim resistor giving us 100 ohms over the full range and it's what we call 10 turns you've actually got to turn this 10 times to make it travel the full length there's actually a worm screw device in here which moves the head along the carbon track just like that uh, this is a trim capacitor with a simple carbon track you can physically see the carbon track um, this is a potentiometer used in audio type projects in your front end of your amplifier again it's the same as this one except it's all built in and protected and you've just got a potentiometer knob which then you've got to turn to make it operate moving down here we have what we call a dual gang potentiometer so it's one shaft all the way through but there's actually two potentiometers here and uh, if you've got a stereo so you've got a left hand channel and a right hand channel this is how they do the, the um, volume control and you'll find one side is left and they use the other side for right but it is all controlled from the one shaft or potentiometer down the bottom here we have a large wattage potentiometer or variable resistor and again it's still you know basically a resistor but in this particular case it's why you can actually see the wire and the wiper wipes around the wire and you've got the two terminals and then in the center you've got the wiper terminal so start finish and the wiper giving us a variable output so the next is temperature dependent resistors sometimes called therm thermistors so these are resistors that change their resistance with temperature so we know all materials change their resistance with temperature so we take advantage of that and can use it as a sensor so are used to measure temperature and are also a sensor in temperature control and protection systems so there are two main types there's the what we call the wire mound wire wound and their thermistor so the uh, TDR temperature dependent resistor TDR it's just a platinum wire platinum is is a um, a material that changes its resistance reasonably well over relatively low temperatures when I say low temperatures you know kind of anything from zero degrees up to uh, 200 odd C you get a pretty good temperature change and uh, what they do with those they stick them into motors near the bearings at either end and it's used to measure the temperature of the bearings so if the temperature of the bearings gets too high it operates a part of the circuit and will turn the motor controls off so you don't 
damage the shaft because obviously a bearing has begun to fail. So a tender temperature dependent resistor can be used by uh, winding copper and nickel or platinum wire around a ceramic former. Thermistors, so a thermistor as its name implies is a thermal resistor. Uh, they're made of a semiconductor material, normally a silicon of some kind. They have a positive temperature coefficient or a negative temperature coefficient so you can get them in both PTC and NTC. And they're often used to detect overheating they actually put these in the windings of motors. They actually wind them into the winding of the motor and bring them out again to protection circuitry. So as you can see here, some pictures of different uh, kinds of thermistors. And it's just a silicon based thermistor. And here's positive temperature coefficient. So as the temperature is going up, so the resistance is going up. So you can see a little plus T. So the symbol is a resistor with a bar and a tail. Bar and a tail. The bar indicates variability. The tail represents temperature. So this is a resistor that is variable with temperature. An NTC, you can see the, the graph going the other way, as temperature goes up, then resistance comes down. So thermistors have many applications um, and they're used a lot, like I said, in the motor protection industry. They're very, very small, easy to uh, embed in the windings of a motor and if the winding should become too warm, then they can trip control circuitry. The next is the LDR or the light dependent resistor. Changes its resistance with a change in light levels and you'll of course have seen many of these on street lighting these days. Are made from a cadmium sulfite, again a semiconductor, which is photoconductive material and used to control lighting installations including street lights. So here's your typical LDR, of course, they come in a clear plastic enclosure because you want to be able to have access to the light. And you have a sulfite element and you have gold metallic strips. And as the light excites the electrons in the sulfate between the gold fingers, its resistance changes. So if it's dark, its resistance is high, and if it's light, its resistance is low. But you'll notice that this is a curve. So it has not much sensitivity up here, and not much sensitivity down here. Most of its sensitivity is happening over the knee of the curve, we call it, because it looks like someone's knee. So over the knee of the curve, it's not a straight line, but that's where we get our best sensitivity from. And again, some electronics is used to detect a particular point to say, okay, we have enough daylight, you can now turn off the street lighting or vice versa, turn the street lighting on as it gets darker. The next is the voltage dependent resistor used in protection systems. So voltage dependent resistors are components that change their resistance by a large amount when the voltage across the component exceeds the rated value. So they have low power types known as VDRs or varistors which are used in surge protection in small appliances and they have high power versions called surge arrestors and are used for lightning protection systems particularly in large substation applications. So both are VDRs, but one's called a varista for small appliance applications. The other one's called a surge arrestor for large energy applications. So voltage dependent resistor, and typically in your computer power supply, there'll be a 
275 volt VDR because uh, our mains runs at about uh, 240 volts RMS so here's our AC and it's running at about 240 what we call RMS which is an effective value through there but the peak value here is much closer to 260 volts the peak so that's why they select a 275 it's just above peak voltage of the AC signal coming in here so we want to be just above the peak voltage so if the peak voltage for some reason we get a spike on here and by the way we can also get negative spikes the VDR as soon as it hits 270 volts conducts and the energy from that spike gets sent down through the VDR and to the neutral conductor so the voltage out this side never exceeds 275 ever if the voltage gets above 275 the extra voltage energy and current gets what we call clipped it gets clipped off so the VDR only conducts for this tiny bit of the spike so just this little part of the spike gets clipped off and the same in the opposite direction only this little bit of the spike down here gets clipped off by the VDR so quite often the VDR is doing that job sometimes the spike gets so big that the VDR fails so sometimes we can get a spike that's very large and goes for a long period of time like this so here's a very large spike and it's going for a very long time and the VDR itself goes permanently short circuit now if that happens and the VDR goes short circuit that's a good thing because it means the current through the fuse goes down to the neutral and the fuse opens circuits so the VDR does two things it clips off little amounts of energy both positive and negative without blowing the fuse and you don't even notice it happening or if a very large spike comes along and the VDR can't handle all the energy the VDR itself goes to zero ohms short circuit goes zero ohms we get a huge amount of current flowing down through here and of course that then operates the fuse the fuse opens the circuit protecting your computer so the VDR is connected so a surge in 230 volt supply causes a high current flow which ends up rupturing the fuse in the worst case situation surge diverters these are these great big insulator things that you can see on high voltage installations they're used to protect equipment against lightning strikes that's their, their big thing uh, they're used in electrical power generation distribution connected between the lines and the metal stake driven into the ground so as you can see here on this one we might have an 11 kV line up here so 11 kV high voltage here and this end will be connected to the body of ground and this voltage stack by the way that's lots and lots of uh, voltage dependent resistors all stacked on top of each other so they all might be uh, 1 kV each and there's 11 of them times 11 gives us 11 kV so if we get a lightning strike hitting the conductor instead of the energy going down the conductor 
and getting into your homes and causing energy spikes, the energy is diverted down through here and down to earth. And they're built to withstand direct lightning strikes. So they're similar in construction to the voltage dependent resistor, except much larger and can absorb much larger amounts of energy. And here you can see a couple more in power stations. Surge arrestors connected across incoming high voltage lines. In this particular case, they look like 330 kV lines coming in. So these are very large surge diverters. So that looks like something in the order of 330 kV. So these stacks are the voltage dependent resistors. And as I said, each little one is a separate little stack of its own. And all we've done is connect lots and lots of VDRs, one on top of the other, to make stack them up and make a 330kV. So again, if lightning was to strike somewhere nearby, the energy would come down the wire, it would be diverted through here into this frame. And can you see the copper strip across the back that I'm drawing on? That copper strip is then connected down here and ends up being connected to the body of ground of the substation. They've actually got big copper mesh nets um, buried in the ground under the substation and they're connected to those big copper mesh nets. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about uh, resistors and how they're used in DC. So that's the end of DC lesson 5 part B.